In today's video, we are talking about camera matching in the post-production process. In recent years, we've had so many powerful cameras hitting the market, which presents cinematographers and creators with a unique opportunity, an opportunity to use different cameras on a single project based on that project's needs. However, this also presents a unique challenge. Each camera manufacturer has a different color science, which means simply put, a Canon camera is going to interpret red, blue, and green slightly different than a red camera, so on and so forth, regardless of manufacturer. So in today's video, we're gonna be diving deep into some color management methodologies, such as Color Space Transform and ASUS, and what role they play with respect to camera matching. Although both of those methods are specific to DaVinci Resolve, please stick around to the end if you are a Final Cut Pro X user or a Premiere Pro user, as there's tons of information you're going to need to know and I still have a method that's going to work for you. But without further ado, let's get right into it. So before we can dive into these color management methods, we must first start with the basics. The first thing you need to know is something called the CIE 1931 color space. The CIE color space was created in 1931 and is defined as quantitative links between distributions of wavelengths in the electromagnetic visible light spectrum and the physiological perceived color in human color vision. Now that is a very mathematic and physics definition. And if you were into that, I have left a link in the description down below, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to keep it very simple. This is what the CIE color space looks like and this basically is an interpretation of human vision on a computer display in the simplest terms. Now you may have heard of color spaces like Rec 709, DCI P3, and Rec 2020 for example. Now those color spaces are simply portions of the CIE color space. Now another word we can call color space is color gamut and you often hear this with respect to a manufacturer's color space. For example, the Canon Cinema gamut or the Black Magic Design color space or the Black Magic Design color gamut, right? Now those are essentially the same thing. These are pieces of the pie of the CIE color space. The other thing that you need to understand when it comes to this color space talk is called gamma, not to be confused with gamut. Now gamma deals with the luminance aspect of color. Now remember black and white are still colors, but that is how we represent luminance with respect to color with our mineral values being shades of gray. Now an important distinction to get into to when we're talking about color spaces or color gamuts and camera matching is that color space does not equal color science. Color science is a sensor characteristic. How a camera is going to interpret those red, green, and blue primaries with in that color space. So for example, you can have a Canon camera that will see a shade of red, but a Nikon camera may see that shade of red differently. And it still has that ability to hit a certain saturation level within a given color space, but the sensor perceives it differently. With that knowledge, we can start talking about methods of color management and how those play a role into camera matching. The first one we're going to talk about is CST, which is short for Color Space Transform. Now, one of the biggest misconceptions I get from my students when I'm teaching them is that Color Space Transform is a way to match cameras or an adequate way to automatically do it. That is simply not the case, but it's understandable why you may think that. Let's say we're shooting with an Ursa Mini Pro G2. Just by looking at the plugin, it would seem that we could take our Black Magic Design color space with the Black Magic Design film gamma and change it to the Airy Log C gamma with the Airy Alexa color space, right? And then we can convert that Airy Alexa Airy Log C image into Rec 709 and Gamma 2.4, which let's just say, for example, is what our display is calibrated to, and boom, we have Airy Alexa color, right? Wrong. We have the Airy Alexa color space and that Airy Log C Gamma, but that has not changed the way in which our sensor will perceive those red, green, and blue 
primaries. It does not change our color science. The way I like to think of it is this. Our display has a set color space that we're going to deliver to. And most of the time, for example, YouTube, we're gonna to deliver to Rec. 709. That's the end point, right? We cannot take our Toyota, transform it into a Lamborghini, and then take that Lamborghini's version of the Rec. 709. We're still gonna get that Toyota version of the Rec. 709. You can test this out yourself, but I've done it for you. For example, with this Nikon Log image, I've used a color space transform from Nikon Log into Area Alexa, and then Area Alexa into Rec. 709. And then I also have this same clip here with just the Nikon Log to Rec. 709 LUT. It did not change my color science, and there may be a slight variation, just a slight bump on the waveform because of some luminance differences, but we've not changed the color science. Where color space transform becomes helpful is when we need to transform into a color space so that we have the correct input for something. So CST is simply a form of color management, and if you're going to match cameras, you're gonna have to do a lot of work by hand, which is going to take a lot of knowledge. This brings us into ACES, also known as the Academy Color Encoding System. Now this is an industry standard means of color management, and ACES has a lot of input device transforms. Some are based on cameras, others are based on color spaces, which allows you to work in a unified color space. Now ACES AP-0 encompasses the entirety of that CIE 1931 color space. But the main use of ACES with color management is to give you a seamless interchange from whatever you're doing. Let's say you're editing your footage and it's been colored and now you need to deliver a VFX plate, right? Well, a lot of visual effects softwares also have ACES. So when you're working in that color space, it's a seamless interchange from platform to platform, especially different deliverables. Another place ACES is really powerful is if you have a color grade and standard dynamic range and then you want to change that to an HDR color grade. Nothing's going to change when you change that output color space because everything has been unified within the ACES color space. Now because ASUS uses some camera specific input device transforms, it does get you to a better starting place and the way in which the tools work in a linear mode does allow you to match cameras a little bit easier. However, this is still going to take some node based work, which means you're going to have to do it by eye. And that is a skill that really comes as you become a more advanced colorist to be able to look at what you're seeing and understand the color theory on how you need to to get from point A to point B. So it is an industry standard. It's a very powerful tool, but it still takes a decent amount of time and it takes a fair amount of knowledge. So then you may be saying, well, again, Sydney, we've talked about things that only work in DaVinci Resolve and not many things that are really great for beginners. This brings me to the sponsor of our video, Cinematch, which is by a company named Film Convert, which I'm sure you are all familiar with. Cinematch is a plugin that I endorse for its ease of use, regardless of if you're a beginner colorist or an expert colorist, but also the fact that it brings color management onto platforms that have never had color management before. Platforms such as Premiere Pro and platforms such as Final Cut Pro X, they do not have powerful native color management capabilities. And Cinematch is a very powerful plugin, not just for DaVinci Resolve, but it brings those platforms that don't have a leg to stand on up to one that would be usable for color work. So how does Cinematch work? Well, we've defined our concepts of color spaces, right, based on this concept of the CIE 1931 color space. What our good friends over at Film Convert have done with Cinematch is profile many different cameras' sensor characteristics. This is where we start to see that shift from color space now to color science, which is what we're trying to match to begin with. So what you're able to do is you're able to shoot with multiple cameras and match them to one single camera. So in conclusion, Color Space Transform and ACES are simply color management techniques. One is designed for simple color management, while the other is designed for interchange of deliverables, such as if you're delivering a VFX plate or if you're going from an SDR to HDR conversion. While Cinematch takes into account not only the color space you're working in, but also the color science of the camera and matches those on a sensor characteristic level. That is what makes Cinematch like nothing else that we've seen on the market. 
With that, you guys know I like to save you guys some money. So if you look in the description down below, there are links to both Film Convert and Cinematch where you guys will get a discount or you can use code SBG at checkout. I hope this video cleared up a lot of the confusion around Color Space Transform, Asus, and Cinematch as well. Because a lot of people have said to me in my comments when I've done videos on Cinematch, what's the difference between Color Space Transform? It's color management, managing color spaces and gammas, not color science management, which is what the aim is with respect to camera matching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, turn on those post notifications. If you have not, be sure to follow me on my social media. The links are in the description down below, as well as the YouTube fam. Their links are also in the description down below. My beautiful people, if you're ever feeling uninspired, uncreative, or just want to give up on life, remember, every day airplanes take off against the wind. Keep climbing, stay inspired, and as always, stay fabulous. My name is Sydney and I will see you beautiful people next time. Peace out.